Thank you, sir. This is the the big ceremonial moment. (laughs) I now control the remote, and uh, I'll just I'll just flip two different things. What kind of are you? Are you a TV watcher? Um, You know, I I was as a kid like like a voracious TV watcher. We have made it. uh, It's a big big thing in the family right now is whether or not we're going to finally uh, get cable. But there's something about the way it just washes, which is which is very comfortable just, you know, and having this, you know, just the surfing aspect of it. Is, yes. is, there, is there anything creative about uh, flipping through the way well, we do? Well, my feeling is that, you know, the early surrealists were completely absorbed with the juxtaposition of completely random events. If you look at early surrealist films like Chien de Lou mm-hmm. by Salvador Dali and Louis Bunuel, and, and I think that channel hopping has actually taken the place of, it is surrealist. I mean, you are creating, you know, these, uh, you know, uh, a series of completely look a gorilla, you know, escaped chip Eden, uh, yeah. uh, and I'm gonna you know juxtapose that with something you know like a car crash or a football game or a Venetian gondola <laughs> as we just looked at. I mean, it, it is there is something very satisfying about that, yeah. you know, if you happen to be a surrealist, right, right, <laughs> which most people aren't. Uh, but but uh, it is relaxing though, isn't it? Like, no, I, yeah. I find it relaxing too. No, yeah. I mean, yeah. Because I, I feel like it's one of two things, right? You're, you're kind of turning off because you're just letting something wash over you. At yeah. the same time, you're actually actively searching to some degree. You're, yeah, you but I mean, the question is whether or not doing this, you would, you can, you're actually in the state of mind to commit yourself to anything. Right. And maybe it's because it's, it's a relative novelty for me. Like, I don't do it that often. Right. Uh, but, um, and I also think that now with, with the whole thing of TiVo and, you know, being able to kind of program, that there's this sense that you have a, an alternate set of controls which is that you actually know exactly what you're recording but whether or not you go and visit that or whether mm-hmm. or not the fact that you have it under your control is just psychologically empowering enough that you don't actually ever visit the programs so i'm not quite sure about sure, that you know sure. but but i do think that there's this um feeling as you're moving through stations that you're you're giving yourself uh, an almost um uh, you know uh, a strange um, kaleidoscope like high of you know like you I've, know. I've always th- I've, I've thought this for years being a, a fan of your films what it's been like to see some of these themes picked up by other filmmakers and uh, you know in pop culture after you've sort of mm-hmm. um, been thinking about these yourself for a long period of time was that does that feel like okay we're all just having the same conversation or did you feel like well yeah I, I I got there already. You know, sometimes it might be the result of someone seeing work, and other times it's just because the antenna become uh, more um, uh, easily to tune in in terms of the frequency. I mean, I think that you know, part of being an artist is that you're trying to tune into particular currents in, in, in the culture around you and uh, explore them in a in a certain way. And then other people, you know, um, that becomes uh, you know a part of the the language. And I mean, it's interesting for me to look at those films in the, in the in, in the early uh, '80s, because speaking of arts, yeah, yeah, because because they're, they're they're very rooted in that time. But then, you know, I mean, I, I think you know one of the revelations I've had is uh, I was kind of briefly involved with with a remake of a uh, Carousel, uh-huh. uh, and Carousel is 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 based on a, a play by, by Molnar called Lilium, uh-huh. and Fritz Lang made a film of Lilium in the early 30s and I went back to look at it and there's a jaw-dropping sequence in that where a character is taken to purgatory and uh, he's uh, he doesn't understand you know whether his life has been evil or, or, or good and so the uh, he's shown scenes from his life on a monitor mm-hmm. and it's all dated and, mm-hmm. uh, and it looks very much like uh, the way we would shoot something now you know, like, you know it's strange that given how much the technology has changed yeah. that we're still looking at the same you know like right. it's still a head in a monitor you know yeah. like you know yeah. and so the, the actual way that that monitor works the way it's actually presenting the image you know from from let's say in, in Fritz Lang's film it's some ethereal connection that's mm-hmm. being made which is you know to to let's say satellite to to now you know like wireless where you can have this kid walk around his house and be eating a bowl of cereal in the right. kitchen and, and, and wander back and this conversation keeps going you know it becomes almost like a